How's it going everybody? My name is Ryan45678 and in this video I'm going to be talking about my brand new GD Plus 4 FDM 3D printer. I'm hoping this video will be kind of a general overview of my first impressions of this printer from just a regular dude's perspective uh, who has never done FDM printing before. So I'll just talk about the general setup, my uh, experience printing on this thing so far, uh, as well as the issues that I've run into, which there are a few, so. Like I said, I've never done FDM before, but I have done resin. I never really had a good setup, so I kind of stopped doing it. A few reasons why I picked the Chidi Plus 4 over something like the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon was one, price, two, bigger build plate, and three, uh, no controversy like Bamboo Lab had with their uh, attempt to lock down their firmware. So the thinking was uh, this thing prints almost as good as the Bamboo Lab with maybe a little bit more tweaking necessary, which has been true, <laughs> I'll say that. And as far as things that I want to print with this, I would like to be able to do functional prints uh, with some higher temp uh, materials like PA6 carbon fiber, which is carbon fiber nylon, uh, maybe some glass filled nylon, uh, PET CF, just any of those kind of engineering filaments, uh, which obviously you have the higher uh, nozzle temperature and the heated chamber that'll help with that. That's going to be way further down the road. I'm not there yet. I want to get PLA sorted out first, then I'll move up to PETG and maybe some other stuff before I even touch those. The other stuff I want to print, which uh, this next one goes kind of along the same lines with the engineering filaments. There's a uh, 3D printing gun designs out there, and I'd like to do some of those. There's also uh, Warhammer Titans, which are about this tall. Uh, so while you get better detail in resin, uh, the size kind of makes FDM uh, a little more practical for those. There's also the potential to maybe print miniatures here. Uh, resin obviously would be better if I could ever get set up to do that again. But there's ways and there's settings that you can do uh, to do that. So I might do that at some point. And then also one thing I've always wanted to do, uh, not necessarily just 3D printed, but this would be the easiest way to do it, is uh, armor, props, that sort of thing. So think like Halo helmets, Halo armor, Halo prop weapons or maybe even skins for um, actual guns that make them look like Halo weapons. There are some out there. Anyway, uh, I know people have done pretty much everything that I've listed here on this printer. Um, so despite the quirks and issues, it is supposed to be a good printer. So let's move on to my experience so far. Uh, the initial setup was really easy. They give you instructions and there's also online instructions. I will say it was a little bit uh, not one-to-one. -one. There were some things in dip slightly different places than what the instructions told you to, uh, to do. Uh, it also didn't really mention the plastic uh, protection film on the camera that you had to take off. So uh, just a little nitpicky things like that. But other than that, it was pretty easy to take it out of the box, set it up, and start printing. So obviously the first thing I printed was the Benchy that came with the printer, uh, with the provided filament, and that printed all right. Didn't have any issues with that. Uh, but obviously the next thing I had to do was use my own filament. So I have some, I've been using some Sunlu PLA. I started with white, I ran out of that, now I'm using black. Um, and what I've been using is Orca Slicer. They have profiles for the plus four, and I've been using the obviously the default 0.4 nozzle. And unless I missed it, Orca Slicer doesn't have a preset for some regular PLA. They have like PLA plus, PLA plus 2.0, PLA matte. And so I've been using the PLA matte profile, a 55 degree bed temp and 220 nozzle temp, which has been working pretty good. And then just tweaking the settings from there. It's really easy to start a print and just let it go. It's honestly more work to slice the print <laughs> than it is to actually start printing. One thing you do have to do with this printer is you have to preheat the bed. So I I've been giving it about 10 minutes once it gets up to uh, the temp, 55 degrees, and then printing. You might have to wait a little longer if you 
use a higher bed temp. And I'm sure it's the same thing with the chamber heater, although I haven't used that yet. As far as other test prints that I've done, um, I've done a flow calibration test, I've done a speed test, I've done a temperature tower. None of those really told me anything. If anything, it told me that my settings are, are okay. I did print a uh, poop shoot, which used about a quarter of a roll of filament, but you can see my poop is in there. And so at this point, and so this point is where we start going from the good slash okay to the bad and worse uh, about this printer so far from my experience with it. The first thing, um, I've been trying to print with supports, you know, because you have overhangs and you have, uh, for example, a model that's, that doesn't have a flat surface. And so using a raft to kind of lift it up from the build plate so it doesn't have that um, first layer look to it. And the supports should just, in theory, come off and leave it looking okay. Uh, I've just been having really bad issues with overhangs looking atrocious, as well as uh, the supported material, especially on non-flat overhangs, just looking really, really bad. And so I may just need to tweak those settings. Uh, it might not be the printer, but I'm not so sure yet, which is where I get to the major issue I'm having with this printer, and that's the dreaded Z offset problems. And so, I don't know if you can see that circle on the plate there. That's the first time I noticed that, that I know of. And what happened was I came, or well, I was looking at the print on my computer as it was going in Orca Slicer. And I noticed it was kind of touching the build plate, but no filament was coming out. It was weird. And then I went down and looked and sure enough, the nozzle is like jur, 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 it's dragging on the build plate. It's not digging into it per se, but it's dragging. Hence the, uh, you can still see some of the marks. <sighs> and so, I think that the gist of it is, uh, there's a couple of potential things that could be going on. Uh, first I'll say what fixed it was, uh, it's not, I can't show it here because I'm not printing, but I, Give it some Z offset. Now, I'll, I'll double check. I'll show I'll show my actual settings in a little bit, but uh, it's it's kind of backwards from what you think. The direction you point the arrow or on the screen is the direction the build plate moves. Because um, I remember at first I thought I was uh, raising the Z offset, like making it bigger, but I was actually raising the build plate, <laughs> which is not what I wanted. So I did that, and it's been pretty much okay for now. But there, there is an issue. There's still an issue because every so often, like every few prints, I'll have one where the nozzle is so close to the build plate that the layer is kind of, the first layer is kind of embedding itself into the texture. And it's almost impossible to get it off. You gotta scrape it like crazy, and I think there's probably still some of it on there now. That's the main major issue that I'm dealing with right now. Uh, and as far as things that could be causing it from my YouTube rabbit hole and Reddit rabbit hole, just Googling like crazy, essentially there's these bed level sensors under here. Uh, they're like pi piezo, piezo, I don't know how you say it. Um, sometimes they're not good, they go bad, and it's like the temperature in the chamber or something, or they're just, they're just not well designed or something along those lines. For some reason, they have a tendency to stop working well or stop working altogether. And so sometimes they don't work right, which is what's happening here, I think, potentially. The other potential, there are at least one or two people that I came across on a Reddit thread where they said their Z motor screws, like the mounting screws, I, think, I believe, were loose. And so they went and tightened those. Uh, that's something I'm gonna try. I need to find out where those are. I wanna say it's probably in the back. The Z rods go down here, and I this cover covers everything, but I imagine there's probably a belt. So I'll just have to look at that at some point. And it's entirely possible too that maybe the issues I'm having with overhangs 
and supports is maybe due to that Z offset not being completely accurate. I don't know. Uh, that's what I'm going to hopefully address in future videos. I'm going to check it out, see what I find. Back to the, the piezo sensors, that's that's what auto, auto levels the bed. And so that's kind of why I'm leaning towards maybe that being the issue. Obviously it'd be nice if the screws were the fix, uh, but if these sensors are bad, even if they're not bad now, which I think they might be, um, they will eventually probably fail. There's a thing you can get, it's a different leveling module, and I don't know exactly how, it, how you put it on. There's a whole GitHub and a bunch of instructions. It's called a... I forgot the name of it. Anyway, uh, that's a different leveling piece of hardware, basically. And if you put that in, make some code changes to the firm, or code changes somewhere, <laughs> let's just say that. It should help you have perfect auto bed leveling. So that's most likely an upgrade I'll be doing at some point. Obviously this thing was, despite being cheaper than the Bamboo Lab, it's still expensive. I'm trying to save money just because of uh, things that have happened recently. I bought a house, is one, <laughs> so I have a mortgage now. That's uh, that's one factor. And not 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 three, four weeks in, uh, there was a hailstorm, so I've been having to deal with uh, insurance with that for my car and my roof. And so that's been frustrating. Hence, I can't just blow $70, $100 on printer parts when I've just spent 600 something on the printer itself. <laughs> so uh, that'll, that'll be coming at some point, probably. Yeah, there, there's honestly, there's just a whole host of, I guess, mostly quality control issues with this printer. Um, obviously the most known one is the, uh, I forget the name of the control board, but the uh, the thing that controls the heat. The initial version in the U.S. on 120 volt uh, was not not made well for it, and some people were were having theirs melt, which is not good. And so they replaced they sent out replacements for people that had it. Uh, this I believe is a newer revision, like the 2025 version, and it should have the new one, but I, I will check. There was someone else who had, uh, and uh, this is one thing I'll check as well, uh, his, he was having bad quality, kind of like what I'm having with overhangs, uh, and he said that he put oil on the, these rods, and apparently they weren't oiled from the factory, and there was like all this dirt and junk that came out, and he wiped it off and put more oil until it came out clean, and, and then it was fine. Um, I thought these were oiled. These for sure on the up and down are oiled. The other ones on the, I don't know for sure, but I will check. There's also uh, heating issues, and I've noticed this here too. It's more for long longevity. It's not going to affect print quality, but the the motors for the X and Y get really hot. Mine are about 100 C, which is not great. <laughs> So there's like fan mods where you can put in a bigger fan. I'll probably do that at some point. It's just really issues they should have addressed when they made the printer, but it's also kind of what you would expect because it's cheaper. And really overall, for what it is, it's a good printer. It's just that a lot of these things should have been fixed out, out the gate and they weren't. And so a lot of it has to be addressed through either support or through uh, modifications to upgrade components and stuff. So anyway, uh, that's my first impressions of the GD plus four. I think it's a good printer. It's going to be a good printer. It's good for basic stuff right now. As long as I figure out the Z offset issues and figure out uh, my overhang and support issues, I think it's going to be fine. I knew, I knew that going in. I knew it would be a little bit DIY compared to a bamboo lab, but nowhere near as, as DIY as something like the Ender 3s. I want to 3D print as a hobby, not, not have a 3D printer hobby. And to that point, I don't mind working on the printer. I don't mind doing things to fix it or make it better, but at least I'm not having to do like 10 different calibration tests on each filament that I do, figure out the profile for each thing. That's the good thing about uh, 
getting into it now is there's all these profiles for um, pretty much every printer. Anyway, uh, before I start rambling too much, I'm going to end this video. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll have a link to this printer on Amazon. It, it'll be an affiliate link. Uh, I'll also try to link some of my filament that I got off of Amazon. Also affiliate links. Um, no affiliation other than that. I did not get this for free. I'm just a dude. <laughs> I bought it. So hopefully that gives you somewhat of a perspective um, from just a regular guy. So hopefully I'll be able to, to keep going with this and fix some of the issues I've been having and print some cool stuff. So anyways, thanks for watching.